Hey there, welcome back to the Genesis Cloud Administrator Training Course. Module 4 will dive into the Contact Center section. Let's get started. We will be creating and configuring queues as well as configuring utilization and canned responses. We will also create wrap-up codes and agent scripts. In addition, we will also cover the rest of Contact Center, not specifically called out here. Queues are the waiting lines of interactions. Contact Center queue settings include creating and managing queues for voice and chat channels for the entire organization. Under Contact Center, within the admin interface, you will click on Queues. The Manage Queues page opens. You will notice there are columns with basic information for each queue. Under Name is the name that you give the queues that you will create. Peer ID is a unique ID that can be used to identify the queue from an external platform. Peer ID is most commonly used to synchronize queues from an external platform in an organization using the Genesis Cloud EX product. Once created, the peer ID cannot be updated. You will decide what routing method you want for each queue after creation and when you configure. Predictive routing uses AI to match agents and interactions. It drives improvements in your selected key performance indicators without manually configuring rules and routing interventions. Turning on and configuring this goes much further than this course will cover, but there are step-by-step -step guides that can assist in setting this up. Since queues are division-aware, you are able to segment queues to a specific division. For example, if you wanted your finance and support lines of business separated, you could create a finance and support division, splitting the user's queues groups into separate divisions. The members column just shows how many members are part of the queue. The three vertical dots allows you to edit or delete the queue. Let's go ahead and create a queue by selecting Create Queue. A side panel should pop out on the right side. Add a name that want that queue to have. Select the division you would like to put the queue in. If you haven't created the divisions yet or will only have the default one, select that. Queues can always be added or moved to another division later on. If you are creating different queues but want the same settings and members, you can select the drop-down and select the queue you would like to copy. Finally, you can create a peer ID in there. Like explained earlier, that is for an external system. This is not a required field. Click Save when you are ready to create the queue. Once the queue is created and shows up in the Manage Queues panel, click on the name of the queue you would like to configure. This opens the queue where there are several different settings you can configure. Within the General tab, you would be able to change the name or add a description. As explained in a previous section, you can set a peer ID during the initial creation of the queue. Within the Division dropdown is where you can select a different division. Click the After Call Work list and select one of the following After Call Work options. Optional allows agents to opt out of selecting a wrap-up code after a call. This feature is useful if your organization does not use wrap-up codes and your agents do not need After Call Work time. The mandatory discretionary option enables agents to choose how long to remain in after-call work status. In this case, they will set their status back to available when they complete after-call work. The mandatory time boxed option sets the maximum amount of time that agents remain in the after-call work state to complete after-call work. If they finish after-call work early, they can change status to receive new interactions or automatically become available at the end of the time specified. The mandatory time box no early exit option prevents agents from setting themselves back to available if they complete after call work early. They remain in after call work status and automatically return to available status at the end of the timeout period. This feature is useful to give agents a cool down period between interactions. The agent requested option needs agents to specifically make a request for after call work before they disconnect the interaction. In the after call work timeout field, Set the time that the agents have for after call work before they receive more interactions. The maximum number that you can enter here is 900 seconds. This timeout period applies only to voice interactions. To apply the timeout period to other channels, such as chat, email, message, and callbacks, enable enforce communication level after call work. To enable manual assignment for a queue, enable the enable manual assignment checkbox. Within the Routing tab is where you will configure how you want the interactions to route. Under Scoring Method, choose how to score the waiting interactions for ranking. When interaction surplus scenario exists and an agent becomes available, the interaction with the highest rank routes first, 
based on the routing method and evaluation method that you specify. Conversation score is a combination of time in queue in minutes plus or minus a priority value in minutes. For example, if a call waits in a queue for 5 minutes and has a priority of 10, the conversation score is 15. This value increases by 1 for each minute of wait time. Priority score is the priority value assigned by Genesis Cloud. Under Routing Method, select which routing method you want to use. Genesis Cloud ACD uses a queue's routing method to determine how to match interactions in agents. The routing method determines which routing behavior to use. Skills-based routing methods also use the evaluation method to determine how Genesis Cloud processes skill requests for interactions. Standard routing routes interactions to the next available agent and considers skills as specified by the evaluation method. Predictive routing routes interactions based on AI analysis that discovers the best available match between an agent and specific interaction. Preferred agent routes interactions to a pool of preferred agents first. Bolza routing routes interactions to a targeted sub-queue of agents with specific skills. And if no agents are available, it relaxes the requested skills based on the queue configuration to expand the pool of agents. Conditional group routing routes interactions to dynamically expanded pool of target group of agents shared between different queues based on the rules set. The rules ensure that the KPI targets of the other queues are not compromised during the routing process. For skills-based routing methods, agent profiles include ACD skill tags to indicate an agent's areas of expertise and knowledge. A skill rating indicates the level of proficiency for each agent ACD skill. Genesis Cloud uses agent skills and ratings for some ACD routing methods. For best available skills, ACD considers the 100 agents with the longest time since last interaction. Of those agents, ACD finds those with all of the required skills and the highest average skill proficiency. From those, ACD selects the agent with the longest time since last interaction. All skills matching selects the agent who has all of the required skills with the longest time since last interaction. Disregard skill. Next agent selects the agent with the longest time since last interaction. Skills are not considered. In the Members tab is where you will add users or work teams. You cannot add both. To add a user, click Add User. In the Add Users box, you can filter down by text, division, group, skill. Enter the value and in the space below the users will pop up. Select the user and press the Add Selected button. In the Add Groups box, you can filter down by groups only and skill groups only. Select which one you want to filter on and enter the name. In the space below the groups will pop up. Select the group and press the Add Selected button. In the Wrap-Up Codes tab is where you will add the wrap-up codes that agents will use to wrap up their interactions. In the Select Wrap-Up Codes box, begin typing the name of the code and then select the appropriate match from the results. In order to add wrap-up codes, you must add them to the system first. To add the wrap-up code to the queue, click the plus sign. In the Voice tab, you will see the service level and service level target in seconds. The service level percentage is the percentage of interactions that meet your contact center's service level target. The service level target is the contact center performance statistics. For example, in the above it shows as 80-20. That means answering 80% of voice calls within 20 seconds. Use alphabetical, numeric, or alphanumeric combinations to set up the caller ID display for outbound calls placed on behalf of this queue. Under calling party name, type the name you want to display for the call recipient. Under calling party number, type the alphanumeric combination you want to display for the call recipient. Under alerting timeout, enter the number of seconds for an alert to display before timing out. Under NQ Flow, select a previously defined architect in queue flow to set as the standard behavior for the queue. This can also be set within the call flow with an architect. Under Default Script, select a published script to display when no default script appears in the application, for example, architect or campaigns. This can also be set within the call flow with an architect. Under Whisper Audio, set up options that let an agent know before connecting to the caller as to which queue the caller entered. To play Whisper Audio only for agents who have auto answer enabled by the administrator, select only play Whisper Audio if agent is configured for auto answer. If no Whisper prompt is configured on the queue or in the architect flow and auto answer is enabled, an audio tone plays. To play Whisper Audio for all agents, select play Whisper Audio for all agents. Under Whisper Prompt, 
Use search to locate the architect user prompt you want to use for Whisper Audio. The system displays the length of the prompt in seconds for each configured language or any configured text-to-speech. To allow voice recording while the caller is waiting in the queue, enable continue voice recording during queue wait. When you disable this option, recording is suppressed during the wait time. Recording resumes when the interaction with an agent begins. If this is a chat queue, there are a few options you can set. Under service level, use the slider to select the service level percentages for this channel. Under service level target seconds, enter the service level target in seconds for this channel. Under alerting timeout in seconds, enter the number of seconds for an alert to display before timing out. Under default script, optionally select a published script to load. If this queue will be receiving messages, then under service level, use the slider to select the service level percentages for this channel. Under service level target seconds, enter the service level target in seconds for this channel. Enable auto answer to automatically connect the interactions of this digital channel to the agent. An alerting timeout to the incoming interactions is not applicable in this case, and therefore the option is not available to be set. However, agents receive an audio alert when a new interaction is connected. Under alerting timeout in seconds, enter the number of seconds for an alert to display before timing out. Under default script, optionally select a published script to load. In the in queue flow area, select a previously defined architect in queue message flow to set as the standard behavior for the queue. Under outbound SMS number, select the appropriate SMS number to assign to the message channel. If this queue will be receiving emails under service level, use the slider to select the service level percentages for this channel. Under service level target in seconds, enter the service level target in seconds for this channel. Under alerting timeout in seconds, enter the number of seconds for an alert to display before timing out. Enable auto answer to automatically connect the interactions of this digital channel to the agent. Under outbound email address, specify which email address to use for emails sent from this queue. Under outbound email address, select the appropriate email address the recipient sees when receiving the outbound email. Under email domain, select the appropriate domain from which to send the email address. Under in queue email flow, select a previously defined architect in queue email flow to set as the standard behavior for the queue. Under default script, Select a published script to display for email interactions. If there will be callbacks in the queue, there are a few options you can set. Under service level, use the slider to select the service level percentages for this channel. Under service level target seconds, enter the service level target in seconds for this channel. Under alerting timeout in seconds, enter the number of seconds for an alert to display before timing out. Under set allow agents to take ownership you can toggle on or off. If you enable agents to take ownership of callbacks under agents, can own a scheduled callback for, use the up and down arrows to define how long the ownership period lasts. The minimum time is one hour, the maximum is seven days. Under agents can schedule a callback in advance for, use the up and down arrows to define how far in advance agents can schedule owned callbacks. The minimum time is one hour, the maximum is 30 days. Now that we have discussed cues, we can start adding ACD skills, wrap-up codes, and canned responses. Under Contact Center, click ACD Skills and Languages. In the search bar is where you would search for a skill you are looking for. From the Category drop-down list, select the category under which you want the skill to be organized. Languages, for example, would be an agent who speaks or comprehends Japanese and can assist Japanese-speaking callers. Skills, for example, would be if an agent is highly competent in warranty specifications. He or she can be a first choice when the system routes warranty calls to agents. When you select the category, either the Add Skill or Add Language box will be presented. Click on it to add. In the text box, type the name of the skill you want to add and click Save. The skill you created should now populate in the Skills window. To create a wrap-up code, under Contact Center, click on Create Wrap-up Code. The Add Wrap-Up Code dialog box opens. In the text box, enter a unique wrap-up code name. The wrap-up code you created should now populate in the wrap-up codes window. Utilization defines the specific number of individual interactions, for example, calls, emails, and chats, that an agent can handle at any time across the various media types that the platform supports. 
Also, utilization settings define which types of media can interrupt or visually alert the agents of other interactions they handle. You can define utilization at the organization level or down to an individual agent level. Configuring utilization is simple. Under Contact Center, click Utilization. The Manage Utilization dialog box appears. Under Maximum Capacity, specify the maximum number of interactions to allow for each interaction type. For example, if you want an agent to work on up to four emails at one time, then set the email maximum capacity to four. For voice media only and to ensure that ACD actions do not interrupt non-ACD interactions, select the block calls when on a non-ACD call excludes transfers checkbox. The system does not include non-ACD calls in the overall ACD utilization count because they are internal, not ACD calls. Under can be interrupted by, specify the interaction types that you want to allow to alert agents while they handle interactions already assigned to them. For example, if you want to alert an agent of an incoming call while they currently handle a chat, then click on the chat row, add voice. Click Save. To revert to the organization's default settings, click Reset to System Defaults. Organizations can use the email channel of digital interaction to trigger outbound emails and to receive inbound email interactions. The outbound emails can be used for campaign management or to trigger agentless email notifications. After the domain's dashboard comes up, you will see that a subdomain has already been created for you. This allows you to redirect any email addresses you want to route to Genesis Cloud out of the box. From this dashboard, you can Add a new domain or edit or delete an existing domain. When adding a domain, click Add Domain. The Add Domain page opens. Choose your domain type, Genesis Cloud, Custom, Campaign or Agentless. Under Domain Name, add your fully qualified domain name and click Save. After saving, the email addresses dashboard opens. This dashboard allows you to add email addresses to the newly created domain. Click on Add Email Address to add a new email address. Once the Email Address Details window opens, before you add email addresses to the domain, be aware of the following considerations. The address you add to the From Email Address box must be an address configured in Genesis Cloud. Any addresses you add to the Reply to and BCC recipients carry over with the address that you specify in the From Email Address box. The address you add to the Reply to Address box overrides the Reply to Address the customer sees when replying to the original email. An agent cannot see or remove the email addresses you add to BCC recipients. An agent can send an email up to 50 recipients. The system considers the number of email addresses that you add to BCC recipients in that maximum number. When routing interactions to a queue, the priority value, set in architect, is added to the duration of time an interaction has been waiting in the queue in minutes. In the email address box, type the email address the customer uses to send an email. In the From Name box, optionally type the agent, department, or organization name that appears to the recipient when a representative responds to an email. In the From Email Address box, type the email address that the recipient sees when the agent responds to an email. In the Reply to box, optionally type the email address that appears when a customer clicks Reply in response to an email from the Genesis Cloud agent. Under BCC Recipients, Type up to five email addresses that you want to blind copy to the email. Under Email History, decide if you always, never, or want to let agent include email history with the agent responses. Under Enable Multiple Actions, enable or disable multiple replies and forwards actions for the last email in the thread. Under Email Routing, if you choose to route to a queue, click the queue list and choose the appropriate queue. To ensure that associated emails route to an agent with matching skills, in the Skills box, add any ACD skills. To ensure that associated emails route to an agent with a matching language, click the Language list and choose a language. In the Priority box, optionally enter the email's priority. If you choose to route to a flow, under Always Route to this flow, select a flow from the list. Do not route as for outbound email only. You can also select not to route to a queue or flow. To configure how to route email that the system suspects is spam, under Spam Routing, Either select Route Spam Email to this flow, and then select a flow from the list or select Disconnect All Email that is detected as spam. To apply an email signature automatically to the outbound email, select Use Email Signature.
canned responses are pre-written answers to commonly asked questions that agents can use during an interaction. Agents can either read the response to a customer or insert the response into a message, chat, or email. Canned responses save time and ensure consistency. Rather than retype the same response, you choose a previously composed response from a library. Libraries organize responses by subject, team, or another classification that makes sense in your business. A library represents a set of standard responses that agents can use to answer a general category of questions. Under Contact Center, click on Canned Responses. The Libraries page open up. If you do not have any libraries created, it will let you know to start by creating a new library. Click on either link and let's create our first library. The Add Library window opens. Just enter your new library name and click Save. You should now see the new library displayed. After creating your new library, you should now see a different view. Along the left side, you will see the libraries as well as the link to manage libraries. To add a response, click on the Add Response button. When the response window opens, in the Response Name box, type a meaningful name. Agents, see this name. The library list already contains the library you selected in Step 3. To specify a different library, click the library name from this list. For a standard response, under Response Type, enable Standard. In the Content box, type the content of your message. Then click Save. For message templates, WhatsApp business customers can reply to inbound messages within 24 hours without a template message. After 24 hours of receipt of the original inbound message or to send a proactive outbound message, WhatsApp business customers must use pre-approved, structured messages called template messages to contact their customers. For campaign SMS templates, the primary use for outbound SMS campaign templates is for outbound SMS campaigns. For campaign email templates, the primary use for outbound email campaign templates is for outbound email campaigns. You create the message content here and then apply it to any outbound digital campaign. Within Contact Center, Response Assets allows you to add an image to canned responses. In order to upload a new image, click Upload. A box pops up to your internal computer file system. Select your image and open it. Click Upload. Once uploaded, you should see the image and details. Now, we can go back to the canned response you want to add the image to. Click the three horizontal dots and select the image icon. To insert an image, you can insert from URL, Upload New Image or Upload from Response Asset Library. Click the image you uploaded. Now, you should see the image in the body of the response. Click Save. Creating a widget allows you to add web chat to your website so that your customers can chat with agents directly from their web browsers. A deployment key created with each widget identifies your website's configuration to Genesis Cloud. Use the deployment key when you add a widget to your website. Start by going to Widgets under Contact Center. You can create multiple widgets for different purposes. For example, you could create a widget to track a customer's journey on your website and even prompt them to start a chat with predictive engagement. You could also create a widget that requires users to authenticate with your site before they can contact an agent by using authenticated chat. Then create another widget to allow anonymous users to ask general questions. Click Create Widget. Enter a name and description for the deployment. Select the appropriate version for your deployment. In this hands-on, we are going to focus on version 2. Specify the domain or domains from which to initiate web chat by clicking the plus sign, entering your domain and clicking add. To connect the widget to a chat flow, search for and select a chat flow under route to flow. Click save. After clicking save, you will notice that you now have a deployment key. Adding the widget to your website is outside the scope of this course. Please get with the administrator of your website to deploy. Within the contact center section, Analytics is used to configure the settings of the Contact Center Analytics. Choose the Analytics settings appropriate for your Contact Center needs. These settings affect the calculations and metrics used in reports, views, and dashboards. For Abandoned Intervals, set the length of each Abandoned Interval displayed in the Abandoned Intervals Metrics view. In Column G, enter the minimum number of seconds dot on each column. You can click and drag them to meet your Abandoned needs. Something to note using the threshold seen here. Abandoned calls greater than or equal to the lower limit, but less than the upper limit of a column's interval appear in that column. For example, a 6-second call and a 19.5-second call both count in a 6-20-second column, 
but a 20-second call counts in the 20-40 second column. Administrators can choose whether to include flowouts, short abandons, or abandoned calls in their contact centers, service level calculations. Service level is visible in several queue-based views and reports, such as the queue's activity summary view and queue metrics daily report. Finally, for short disconnect time, set the length of the short disconnect time for the flow's performance summary and detail views. A short disconnect is when a customer disconnects from an architect flow before the set amount of time. In order to set a default panel manager for agent assist, we need to create an assistant and knowledge base. We will first start by creating a knowledge base. Access to the Knowledge Workbench homepage varies by region. Enter the URL as seen here, replacing your region's host with the appropriate Genesis Cloud region. You will notice that the Create Article button is grayed out due to a knowledge base needing to be created. So, let's go ahead and click Create Knowledge Base. The Create a New Knowledge Base page opens. Add a name, language, and description for the knowledge base. Click Create. The knowledge base opens to the Articles page. Now the Create article is able to be pressed. Go ahead and click the button. Enter the question that a customer might ask, such as what are your hours? Add your category and labels. Within the content for the answer, provide an answer that can either be read back to the caller or can be populated in a chat. A good example to answer the hours question would be, we're open Monday through Friday 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. Once you are complete, press Save, then press Publish. After closing, you will notice your first article has been created. If you click the box to the left of the article, you will notice you can assign a category or labels and export. Now, on to creating the assistant to tie this together with the default panels. Within Contact Center, Assistance is where you will go to create the tie between the knowledge base articles and the panel manager agent assist panel. Something to note, you will need to have a queue and existing knowledge base set up prior to creating a new assistant. After clicking on Assistance, click on New Assistant to load the new assistant window. Under Name, enter Genesis Agent Assist. The Knowledge Suggestion Engine selection is currently unavailable. Select the language and the knowledge base. Click Save. After clicking Save, the Queues tab appears. Click on the Assign to Queues tab to pick which queues you would like to add the new assistant to. A panel will slide out from the right with the list of queues your organization has. You can search for a queue. Just click the box of the queues you want to add it to and click Assign. After assigning, you should now see them in your assistant. When agents receive interactions, the Interactions panel is set to show the profile panel by default. As an administrator, you can specify the default panel for each agent interaction type using the Panel Manager. To select the default panel for each interaction type, go to Panel Manager under Contact Center. As you can see, the default contextual panel shows the different interactions you can set the default panels on. We are going to review the voice panels. Something to note, all of the different interaction have the same default panels to choose from. Genesis Agent Assist helps agents to search for answers to customer questions. Genesis Agent Assist is available on the CX Agent Workspace and on the CX Digital Agent Workspace as well. During a conversation with a customer, the Genesis Agent Assist automatically offers answers to customer questions, constantly searches the knowledge base, and presents the top suggestive articles in the Genesis Agent Assist pane. Although it can be assigned a voice, Agent Assist is most helpful with chat. Agent Assist Google CKI provides the real-time transcription of a customer call and knowledge suggestions that update automatically based on the context of the conversation. Knowledge suggestions include FAQ or knowledge article recommendations that make agents more efficient and knowledgeable. Agents no longer search for information by themselves and can focus on their discussions with customers. This feature makes them more productive and improves the overall customer experience. To stream this content to the agents, Agent Assist Google CKI interfaces with Google Cloud using conversation profiles defined in the Google Cloud Agent Assist Google CKI console. Your knowledgeable content is stored and indexed in Google Cloud Storage. Within the default tab for agent interactions, the Callback tab allows an agent to schedule callbacks during a voice interaction. When you set canned responses to default, you can use the canned responses during an interaction by either reading the response to a customer or by inserting the response into a chat, email, or tweet. Defaulting to the customer journey allows the agent to see a customer's contextual journey history. When notes is set to default, 
It will open so the agents have the ability to make notes without having to click on the Notes tab to make the notes. The profile is the out-of-the-box default, which attempts to match the phone number to any contacts within Genesis Cloud. If no contact exists, it will allow you to create one while on the interaction. Making the wrap-up codes set to default, it displays the wrap-up codes available to the queue the interaction came in on. Script designers create instructions, called scripts, to help agents process interactions. Scripts display editable records and directions to each agent that handles a particular type of interaction. Scripts present agents with details about the caller or contact, often with fields for collecting or updating information. Properly designed scripts ensure consistent handling of interactions. Under Contact Center, click on Scripts to get started. Out of the box, there are not scripts created. So, in order to add a script to a call flow or queue, we will need to create one. Click on Create. You can also import one from one already created or from a different org. Type a name for the script. A selection of script templates displays. Templates are complete or partially complete scripts that you can base your new script on. The selection of templates includes templates that other people in your organization create. Choose a template. Blank script is a blank script without any customizations. The default callback script is the default script that pops for callbacks. Use this script if you did not specify another script in Architect to run in response to an in-queue callback action. The default inbound script is the default script that pops for inbound calls. The default outbound script is a default script for outbound dialing. This script contains a control for updating contact list fields. When you base a script on this template, you must select a contact list in the script's properties. Otherwise, Scripter shows no edit fields. In this hands-on, we are going to select the default inbound script. Also, you will notice that there are currently no user templates on the User Templates tab. Click Create. After selecting your script, the script editor pops up, where you can add components, additional pages, variables, and actions. In this hands-on, we are going to utilize the default data that is already displayed. There are so many data dips, components, and variables that can be displayed it will take entire course. The basic build will get you enough to get started. In order to publish, you will need to click Script, then click on Save. After the script is saved, you will need to click on Script again, but this time, click Publish. Your script is now published and able to be added to call flows or queues. One additional thing you can do is click on Create Template from Script. A Create a Template from a Script box appears. Give it a name and description and click Create. Now, let's go back to Admin and click Script Templates from the Contact Center section. You should now see the template we just created in the Script Templates. You are able to select it and delete it. There is also another tab labeled Component Templates. This is for components you build in the Script Editor that you want to make a template and reuse on other scripts. To recap, we walked through one of the most important sections of this course, the Contact Center. We guided you through several hands-on exercises including adding cues, skills, wrap-up codes, and scripts. As our previous modules, all step-by-step -step guides are attached to this module and can be downloaded through the paid course. Genesis Cloud Contact Center contains all of the features of Collaborate and Communicate along with Contact Center services for integrating multi-channel routing, outbound campaigns, speech-enabled IVR, recording and quality management reporting, and graphical scripting. On Module 5, we will wrap up the people and permissions as well as the directory section that we started in Module 3. Look forward to seeing you there.